Ex-convicts, what is the worst thing you have ever seen a guard do while in prison? I had a friend whose brother was a prison guard. He had some stories but the only one I remember was a time when there was a prisoner in solitary for a while who had become very attached to a praying mantis that had somehow made its way into his cell. The mantis lived with him for quite some time and he loved it like it was his friend. One day a prison guard who wasn't aware of the mantis being important to this prisoner stepped into the cell, saw the mantis, and promptly slammed his hand down on it to kill it. The prisoner was, understandably, devastated. I'm a CO, and one of the worst things I ever saw was an officer kidney punch a handcuffed inmate. Naturally, I reported it. That officer is now a deputy warden. Specifically, my deputy warden. True story. I worked at a max facility and I was super respectful, no need not to be ever, and the men there were always super respectful back. It's frustrating that other officers didn't realize this and administration didn't realize that the same officers who kept having issues were having issues because they were starting it. I really enjoyed my job. I was super strict because I have a fear of getting in trouble, I communicated well and seriously never had issues. My favorite memory was I was working straight 16 to 17 hour shifts for 27 days in a row before I was scheduled for a major surgery. The inmates knew because it was a small prison and no one keeps their mouth shut law. But I was sitting in the guard box on the yard and I looked at my watch and it was 1700 and blinked and it was 1800 and an inmate is tapping on the window, letting me know second shift was on so I wouldn't get in trouble. I obviously didn't mean to fall asleep, I was just exhausted. It was just a super nice thing to do. Once saw a CO stomp the back of an inmate's head and watched the heel of his boot literally scalp the guy. Huge chunk of head meat and hair stuck to a black boot still sits fresh in my memory yet it was 6 years ago. Same guard was smuggling in spice and heroin. The inmate probably owed a debt is my speculation. Edit, spice, as in synthetic marijuana, not cumin lol. My friend was in prison recently and told me this story. They were caught with drugs in their cell. The correctional officer came in with six to eight jugs of rotten milk, popped off the lids and set them down in the cell. He told the inmates he'd remove the jugs the next day, as long as they were still full, he can't flush them down the toilet. Apparently it was a long night of gagging and being miserable. They tried to take shifts covering the jugs with their hands, but of course it was mostly futile. That said, he said it was a better alternative than the whole or other more accepted punishments. Apparently some prisons are trying to phase solitary out, and revulsion-based punishments are one alternative some places are using. Definitely stopped any of them from hiding drugs in the cell in the future, mostly out of fear of the fellow inmates kicking one's ass if they knew you risked getting that punishment for the whole cell again. Ex-convict here, there's a long list of beep up beep that I've seen, and it's hard to really say which was the worst. Rape and assault is obviously the worst out the gate, but there's a lot of close seconds because of how long the beep up things would last. Forced semi-starvation is one. Being in lockdown in our cells for weeks or months at a time without being allowed into the commons meant we basically lived as if in solitary confinement. Usually got put on lockdown because someone beep it up for everyone, but sometimes it was an unwarranted lockdown. It came with a whole host of issues, but lack of food was common. Meals were passed through the doors on trays during lockdown. Accidentally forgetting three quarters of the meal portions on specific trays, or forgetting certain cells trays completely would mean that an inmate would get just enough food to survive but would be slowly starved. Dot. It was usually just a specific CO who had a grudge against a specific inmate, versus a collaborative effort, but knowing that you're going to not get at least two of your meals for the day and having no alternative way to get out of your cell to procure food for weeks at a time was awful. There was also something we called tile therapy. It was when a CO would decide that you needed an attitude adjustment and would do a takedown tackle to restrain you to take you to solitary or your cell instead of simply cuffing or even verbally escorting you. If an inmate fully warranted it, it was not referred to as tile therapy. Tile therapy specifically referred to the hyper-aggressive, completely unnecessary, and violent nature of the takedown in proportion to the offense that determined the need for a takedown. Dot. It usually involved smashing the inmate's face into the tile during the initial tackle, to stun and subdue them, but would also include a variety of battery and such. For example, a CO once broke an inmate's jaw from slamming his head into the tile floor so hard during one such takedown. I don't even remember what the dude supposedly did because it was something so minor, like not having his uniform shirt tucked in. 
and there was just so much coercion and manipulation and beep in general. COs had the power to make your life a living hell if they so desired, and they had a plethora of creative ways to punish you, on the books, and off. I served 8 years, so I have a lot of stories. Fight broke out in cafeteria. Normally guards will let the fight transpire for a minute before jumping in, mainly to let them fight it out and settle their differences. It was two dudes. A minute into the fight one dude pulls out a knife and straight up pierces the other dude in the head. Guards were well aware of the situation and just beep watched. Guy bled out and they finally tackled the stabber. A solid two minutes had passed before they even did anything. A friend who did time in a federal prison told me that the intimidation by the guards is far worse than that by other inmates. Let the K9 beep on an inmate. Happened far more than once. One of my cellmates got it once for getting in a fight. Not as bad as solitary, but still, people don't realize that there's essentially no enforceable rules that COs have to follow as long as no inmates die, it's not like you're going to report them. Thank God I never had to go to county but did spend a day, night in the bookings in NYC. Queens specifically. I got busted cause I was in a vehicle with someone doing drugs. They were hitting a pipe and the Tactical Narcotics Task Force, TNT, was parked right across from us. Dude threw his pipe at my feet as the D's were running up to the car. He was wouldn't claim it as his so they charged everybody. Everybody in the van. There was three of us. Handcuffed in the back of a white panel van with no windows and a little seat. No way to stop yourself from falling over when they hit the gas cause everything is slick plastic. We were the first ones arrested. They drove around doing busts for 3 to 4 hours until the van was full. Crack dealer, dope addicts etc. The crack dealer had swallowed his pieces of crack thinking that would save him. He still got arrested. After an hour he's not looking so hot. Sweaty, huge pupils shaking. His bags busted open after he swallowed them. Dot. We end up getting the D's attention and they finally take him to the hospital. From there we go to the precinct for like 4 to 6 hours. Chill in a cell nothing special. Next was Queen's bookings. First cell there was like at least 75 people. They take all your info and blah blah. There's a dude in the cell talking wild loud. I got shot 10 times in 89 I can't control my bowels. I need help going to the bathroom. CO I need help. Nah dog no help coming, they just walk right by. Now he's getting agitated. I'm finna beep myself, he says. Everybody's going wild now 75 hood dudes like, CO y'all better take him to the hospital or the nurse or do something. Two minutes later we all smell it. Oh boy beep all over. Now everybody really going off lol dude sees a CO coming and scoops up a turd and hurls it at him as he's walking by LMAO, I've never seen the gates open so fast and so many COs rush in and yoke somebody up holy beep the rest of the night was uneventful, got a quick halal bologna and mustard and fruit punch and slept on the floor till I saw a judge. Got out the next day rod. Not a CO but an administrator. So my uncle was charged on a drug bust and was found guilty. He was sentenced but we decided to appeal because he had no part in it. Pretty much he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Anyways he gets sentenced to 3 years and to be deported. We won the appeal less than a week before he was to be deported. We won the appeal on Wednesday, the panel of judges pretty much declared him a free man at 4 pm, he was to be released as early as Thursday. Our lawyer tells us the system take anywhere between 12 to 24 hours to show up at the prison system. Mind you, we were 16 hours away in another state. That Wednesday night my brother and I make the drive. We got there at 5 pm and the COs said they have received no notice. And they have never released anyone because it's a detention center for deportees. No one has ever been freed. And the rule was that they can't release anyone past 5 and guess what? Friday ICE would be there to make the deportations. Dot. We only had an hour. I call the lawyer ASAP and explain everything. He asks the CO to get the director. Well this racist lady who I assume was in charge of finalizing the deportation had my uncle's deportation signed and ready to go. I had our lawyer on the phone and asks me to be put on speaker. He grills the administrator to death. Saying he will sue the entire facility and what not. 30 minutes later my uncle was released. When he got home we got a call from his cellmate who said that the entire block cheered and celebrated my uncle's freedom. To the point that they made fun of the administrator. Everyone hated her because it was rumored her husband was a KKK member and apparently someone had seen a confederate flag tattooed on her forearm. One of my favorite things to do was toss cells looking for contraband. It was like a treasure hunt to me. 
I always was very respectful with inmate stuff. It could be what most would perceive as nothing, but I respected the inmates' belongings as I would want someone to with mine. If they had a clean locker, I would move things and then arrange the on their bed or another already searched area neatly so when they returned to their cell, they could put things back neatly and efficiently. I had prisoners requesting that I do their checking when it came time. I did my job well, and was known for finding a fair amount of contraband. Now I had a co-worker who took what you might call the opposite approach. If he could break, ruin or destroy property, he did with glee. He'd open food packages, accidentally spill, throw out photos or anything of the sort. I watched him throw an inmate's legal folder in the toilet, and I'm a separate incident, tear up photos of an inmate's kids. He was an asshole. I reported him naturally, but was basically told that I should appreciate his tenacity. I only lasted six months in that environment and was glad to switch roles to being the GED teacher, which was way better. Not sure if this counts but here it goes. A horrible CO was as bad as they come. The other COs didn't seem to like him either. Beat up inmates, steal their stuff, made them play reindeer games etc. One inmate just wasn't having it and was some shot caller in a Mexican gang. I don't know anything about which one or Mexican gangs in general. One day, this Mexican shot caller handed the guard pictures of Hitman following around his kids at school and even their bedrooms while they were away. Took a picture of a bullet left in the kids' rooms and when the CO went home, sure enough it was there. This pretty much implied he was going to kill the CO's family. The CO quite. And hash x 200b. Edit, but to the handful of you saying this didn't happen, I will tell you I wish I lived in your fairy tale of a world. I won't say where and when, but when I arrived, the staff opened two cell doors to an empty day room floor. My cellmate, not having much to do except be nosy, stared out the window. It happened quickly, but he immediately recognized what was going on and mattered, ah beep here we go again. I went to look, from one door appeared a one-armed skinhead who walked towards the only other cell open. A kid, alone in his new cell, poked his head out to see why they cracked his door. He saw the skinhead and froze up. The skinhead pushed him inside and beep him up. I later found out it was staged fighting by the guards. Shooter put a serious tag on this bud. This comment section kind of freaks me out. Just research what the American army did at Abu Ghraib prisons. May your day be filled with joy and happiness. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more quality content every day.